so the um this process this spiritual unfolding or um coming to live in a uh um, in the the flow of naturalness however we describe it or we don't really need to describe it but we're all here for this um reason i i guess we could say it's not so much about what we want it's much more about what is and um and we all know that we all sense that anytime we've ever come in contact with what is with unfiltered reality um we know it at an, at an instinctual level, we know what that is. And we know that there's deep peace there. There's unbinding, unhindered flow. But even those descriptions are um, often associated when we are reforming the the sense of the one that's happening to or the one that it did happen to and the one that can do something about um things to recreate that experience or um even better make it a permanent experience right so it's a it's a it can be a strange place to be uh, in for a for a time for even a few years <laughs> or more, but um, but underlying all of it is, is a natural process. Yeah, you're in good hands. Um, but the, the thing that makes it can make it confusing, can make it disorienting, is that while all of that that natural process is carrying itself out and taking place, while the unbinding of identity from thought and then from the physical body is occurring, um, there's something there, there's some will that's trying to keep up, trying to put it in the right boxes and the right categories of understanding, um, the, trying to sort it away in my collection of experiences um, trying to apply it to, to my life in the way that makes the most sense or the way we perceive is um, the way that we can sort of cement the experiences. And that's also just natural that all that happens. Um, and it, I would say it pretty much always does to one degree or another. There's uh, something coming along for the ride that uh doesn't really know how to drive it doesn't understand what these underlying processes are it doesn't really understand what unbinding is or unmanifest or the unborn it doesn't really know that but it can learn the terms and it can um gather information about those terms and it can try to get to those states that it remembers or that it reads about in a book etc but that's just a side effect all of that is is simply just just thoughts doing what they do they reflect and they rearrange concepts and ideas and experiences um and they do that in imagined pasts and futures When we, um, when we let go of time in this moment, we see that none of that really can happen. We can't jockey for position with reality here because there's only reality. There's only the movements and the sounds and the sensations. And it's all gone as soon as it's perceived. It's already gone as soon as it's perceived. It's so alive, so real, so immediate that it can't be recorded, it can't be conceptualized or mapped at all. But the mapping apparatus 
continues. That's what it does. It's not actually mapping anything. It's just trying to, it's doing its best, spinning its wheels. Um, and when we're in that intermediate area phase where we kind of have one foot in two worlds, one foot in each of two worlds, that's when it can be disorienting. Um, it's really, it's why it comes down to identity. It's a, it's a matter of identity. Where is, where does identity lie? Where does, first it's my identity, then it start, starts to feel more like a universal or just a, some kind of fluid identity. We might even recognize that there's no specific identity there, but the remnants of identity are still functioning. Um, and so there's, there's a, a little bit of a, maybe a struggle or a discord between this perfectly natural process, which really we can always come in contact with in the immediate, in presence. The moment we listen to one sound, that's it. There's nothing more to it. Um, but that process and the, the one that's trying to keep up with it, <laughs> one that's trying to make the process about me. Um, So I think it's important to be um, forgiving of ourselves, gentle with ourselves and recognize this is just how it goes. That's fine. There's gonna be times of disorientation. There's gonna be times when we feel like we've gone backwards or like, oh man, I, I felt like I've, I've been through that already. I feel like I metabolized that. I feel like I've accepted that emotion or that set of conditions that can occur in life. And then the next time it comes up, we're like, oh man, I'm feeling it at a different level or uh, I feel like I've regressed or <laughs> I'm feeling almost like a childhood emotion associated with this that I feel like I had somehow evolved beyond. And that can happen and it does happen. It happens to everyone. It happens to everyone along this, this sort of path. Um, but again, it, it's important to just be gentle with ourselves and realize all of that all of those experiences, contractions, disorienting moments and times, those are, first of all, perfectly normal. Um, they don't mean anything's gone wrong or gone off the rails, even when we feel like we've completely gone off the rails. Um, and not only do they mean that there's nothing that's gone wrong, they are really a good sign because if everything in your life just continues on a path where you always know what's what, you know where it's going, you know who you are, you know what to expect, you know how to get what you want. If you have that kind of assurance and certainty in life, um, you're probably not really digging into things you're not, the, the, the parts of us that are unseen. Um, because I'd venture to say that every human walking the face of the earth has repressed material repressed emotions, parts of themselves they're, not, they're really not aware of. Um, and the fact that we are willing to come in contact with that, that we're willing to stir the pot, dig up the mud and get it up, you know, swirling in the surrounding waters so that things become unclear and disorienting um, is good. Without doing that, without digging in, without bringing repressed material into consciousness, we really won't sort out the, the problem of birth and death. We won't get to the root of suffering. Um, maybe with exceptionally good karma or something, who knows, but for the vast majority of us, it's, it's, a, it's a messy process at times. And that's, that's how it goes. So it's, it's, um, it's a good sign that you're in, the, you're in the right area. You're looking in the right places. Um, St. John of the Cross talks about this in his um, Dark Night of the Soul. I can't quote it exactly because I can't remember it exactly, but it's I, uh, to go, to go uh, where um, you know not, you have to take a path that you know not, um, things like that. It's, it's, it's that strange disorienting, uh, movement and yet something in your instinct is still moving you. Something, something in your deep instinct that's beyond thoughts and perceptions and 
are wanting to put everything in the right place in our immediate perception of how things are for me and want to gauge how we're doing. Like all of that stuff can be completely on tilt and disoriented. Uh, and yet there's some instinct that's carrying us through this, carrying us forward. And um, you can trust that. It's sometimes a very quiet voice, very quiet. It doesn't even speak in words. Uh, it's very subtle. But it says, this is okay. This, it's okay to go through what we have to go through. To live uh, the experience of non-duality is a pretty radical uh, thing, I would say. Radical just meaning, well, it's uncommon um, and it's remarkably different than the typical way of perceiving moment to moment reality. So it's going to require um, kind of radical um, methods in a way, in a way of saying it. Um, you don't get there by being comfortable. Let's just say that. Um, we all, we all, of course, as humans, we all enjoy comfort, and and it's it's okay that um, sometimes we we want to be comfortable. We want to just relax and not work so hard at things and take it easy and all. That's fine, um, but some willingness to be uncomfortable uh, is very important, I think, in this this kind of work. Some willingness to be disoriented, some willingness to feel things that we we think we shouldn't feel <laughs> or we don't want to feel, or we feel like we've resolved and here they come back again. Um, a willingness to just recognize that it's okay that this is happening. It's okay. There's a there's an underlying um, truth that's playing itself out here and it has to and your your journey won't look like anyone else's it, we we cling to these um things we hear other people say as well like oh it'll go like this and then you'll experience this and then that'll be you know the last thing i thought was this and then all of a sudden everything just all the boundaries disappeared and, and i felt completely you know free after that right and then we're like oh gosh if i could just inquire that way or you know, when's that going to happen for me? And that that apparatus that we have, it's gauging how we're doing and comparing it to others and trying to manage our way through things. That's that's fine. That's just thought. It's it's going to be there for a while. Um, but it's this is a, a very intimate journey. It's a very um, it's a really personal impersonal um, thing. <clears throat> so in a way. No one can tell you how to do this. No one, not Buddha, not the best pointers in, in history. Um, the pointers are helpful. But you have to you have to kind of walk off the end of any pointer, any technique, any meditation, any inquiry. And you have to get you have to walk off the end of it right into the unknown. Um, and the unknown for you is is very individual because um, we all I mean we all have different experiences of course but how you experience a sound and I, how I experience a sound physiologically is probably similar I would imagine but it doesn't really matter. However, the conditions that you experience in any given moment are different than the conditions I'm experiencing or anyone else is experiencing. The conditions of the moment um, are unique. And that moment is unique, completely unique. And that's the, the horror and the, the wonder of immediacy that, that you can't prepare for this. That's the thing, you can't prepare for re realization. You can't prepare for this moment or this moment or this moment, but you can open to it. Um, you can die into it. You can let it completely overtake experience. Uh, but sometimes that's, you have to do that incrementally a little bit at a time, trust a little bit more, trust a little bit more, and then recoil and try to re, you know, regroup and 
think about how things are and figure out where you are on the path and read up read about some stages and read about some other stuff and try to like put it all in some kind of map mental map and then you just get tired of that again and you're like okay well i didn't really do it again and so i relax and start to just you know feel something in the moment something happens unexpected and you have an emotion that goes damn it i didn't want that to happen i'm frustrated now and then you're like okay well maybe frustration is the entry point feel into the frustration and then the sounds come alive and then the sounds are moving through you and the body's dissolving and yeah so life will keep sorting you out um and just know that there are going to be periods where we're going to want to regroup it inwardly and figure it all out again and um but that part of us is also um, dissolving into everything so well, we don't want to judge ourselves for it. Um, I would I would say approach it with uh, humanity and, and the natural grief that's going to come with letting that go, because <clears throat> we're letting our, everything go <laughs> in this process as well. Everything solid, everything um, continuous. Because reality in the moment is not continuous and it's not solid. It doesn't continue. It didn't come from anywhere. It's not going anywhere. You can't grasp it. You can't find it or describe it. And yet it's explosively alive. It's radically intimate. So sometimes you'll know what this whole process is about, or you'll, you'll feel like you know. Other times you'll feel like you have no freaking clue what is going on, or why, why we're even doing this, or why, you know, why, why anything's happening in life. Um, and both of those ways of perceiving are, um, those are just inflections of thought, really. They're inflections of mind. Natural reality is beyond confusion. Um, And confusion is fine it's an emo as an emotion, but the, the reality itself, it doesn't, it's not confused. It's not um, unsure about anything. It just is. It's like kind of unapologetic. So well, at times it feels like everything's being kind of taken away or stripped away. It can feel like this at times. It doesn't You don't have to go through that, but most people I think do, where it just feels like every last remnant of what, what you hold, what, what you uh, count on to give yourself some kind of security or sense of orientation, just, just keeps getting pulled away and dissolved. Um, it doesn't feel like that all the time, but it certainly can. Um, just know that there's a there's a compassion beyond the human dimension that's at work here, it, um, but you can't come in contact with that with uh, with any agendas really, with any um, with any insistence to to put it in a paradigm that that you're comfortable with. Um, so the, so that transition period can be awkward to say the least. Um, but underlying all of this, infused in all of this is um, is really a, a love that knows no bounds. You could say it's the love of being but it goes even beyond being. It's beyond being and non-being. And it's also not beyond, it's immediate, here, intimate. So I really don't have anything else to say. If anyone wants to um, have any last comments or 
read something or whatever. Um, that's fine. Uh, I'll stop the recording.